Thank you all for coming to the VGM commemoration of 2019. This year marks the second anniversary of the VGM dedication after April 2017. 31 years after the passage of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, 50 years after Manzanar Committee's first pilgrimage to Manzanar, and 77 years after the signing of EO 9066. My name is Phyllis Hayashibata, and I'm a member of the VGM Committee, which includes Kay Brown, Nikki Gilbert, May Kakahashi, Arnold Maeda, Brian Maeda, Alice Deck, Suzanne Thompson, the late Yosh Tomita and Emily Winters. One of the VGM committee, one of the VGM committee members' sisters, younger sister is Mary Nomura, also known as the Songbird of Manzanar. When Mary was 16 years old, she was a student at Venice High School, and Executive Order 9066 forced her family to leave Venice for incarceration in Manzanar. At Manzanar, Mary formed a singing group with a brother and a sister, and she would sing solo at various camp events, like talent shows, other programs, and the camp dances. Thus, she got her nickname, the Songbird of Manzanar. We were very happy today to have Mary sing one of her favorite songs. And it's my fault that we don't have a cassette player. So she's gonna sing a cappella. Thank you very much, Mary. Good morning, everyone. Um, it was at this very corner that our family of seven left here in Venice. We were actually people of Venice because we were living here since the 1930s. And so when the um, uh, executive, executive order came up, came up we, uh, a family of seven, left here for Manzanar. And now, this, to this day, there's only two of us left of the Kageyama family. My sister May sitting here, and, and I'm the only one. Here, but anyway, I'm supposed to sing something. I don't have a the tape player. I have the CD, but nothing to work on it. So I have to sing a la carte. I say a la carte instead of because I'm always eating. I'm always eating, so it's a la carte. So I hope I start on the right right tune that tune now uh, tune. And this is a song that I used to sing in Manzanar in the '40s. It was just it was just a brand new song. Like Bing Crosby's uh, movie had it in there, and it's called Accentuate the Positive, and. That's what us young people uh, strive for in camp, you to make the best of it and don't dwell on all the negatives. So for that, the, I chose uh, Accentuate the Positive and I hope I don't sing in a baritone or a soprano because I'm neither one of those. <laughs> Gather around me, everybody. Gather round me while I preach some. Feel a sermon coming on. The topic will be sin, and that's what I'm again. If you wanna hear my story, well, settle back and just sit tight while I start reviewing. The attitude of doing right. You gotta accent to eat the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum, and have faith or pandemonium's liable to walk upon the scene. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Man, they said you better accent you ate the positive, eliminate the negative, and I'll latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't you mess with Mr. In Between. Thank you so much, Mary, for that sultry rendition of Accentuate the Positive.
to remind us all of what the Venice Japanese American Memorial Monument stands for, Nikki Gilbert, she's a VJAM committee member, will read the paragraph text on the front of the VJAM. In April 1942, during World War II, more than a thousand American men, women, and children a Japanese ancestry in Venice, Santa Monica, and Malibu reported to this corner at Venice and Lincoln Boulevards. They were allowed to bring with them only what they could carry. The Western Defense Command and 4th Army issued Civilian Exclusion Order No. 7, which gave families only days to dispose of their property and possessions. Buses transported them directly to the American concentration camp at Manzanar in Inyo County, where many internees were incarcerated for more than three years. Japan's December 7, 1941 attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii plunged the United States into war. Within days, into World War II. Within days, the Department of Justice put Japanese American community leaders into detention centers for the unsubstantiated fear of collusion with the enemy nation of Japan. On February 19, 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which empowered the U.S. Army to declare areas of Washington, Oregon, and California militarily sensitive. Executive Order 9066 forced the removal of 120,000 Japanese and American citizens of Japanese ancestry from the West Coast to be imprisoned in temporary assembly centers at fairgrounds and racetracks. Months later, they were taken to 10 American concentration camps under the War Relocation Authority. This forced removal and imprisonment without any regard to due process or the writ of habeas corpus violated their rights under the U.S. Constitution. May this Venice Japanese American Memorial Monument remind us to be forever vigilant about defending our constitutional rights. The powers of government must never again perpetrate an injustice against any group based solely on ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, race, or religion. Thank you, Nikki. Now will we hear from the four former Manzanar internees whose quotes are on the side of this monument. First, I will introduce Brian Tadashi Maeda and read his quote. Then Brian will introduce the other um, quoters and they, he will read their quote. So Brian, could you stand please? <laughs> Brian Tadashi Maeda was born in the American concentration camp at Manzanar and has devoted much of his career as a filmmaker to documentary the forced removal and incarceration of persons of Japanese ancestry. His documentary, Music Man of Manzanar, told the story of Lou Frizzell, who taught music and drama to the teenagers at Manzanar High School. The film featured his older brother, Arnold, who was a teenager when he was sent to Manzanar. Brian's newest film, We Said No No, dramatizes the conflict at the Thule Lake Segregation Center. Brian's quote reads, this is the very corner my family reported to before being sent to Manzanar concentration camp with only what they could carry. They, like many other families, lost everything, their homes, their businesses, their liberties. Thank you, Brian. Now Brian will introduce you to the other quoters. Arnold Tadao Maeda is my older brother, my Nichan, as we say. Uh, please stand and wave to the audience. Many, many people, when we first meet, they, they, they're kind of surprised to uh, know that I'm his brother. They think, all the time, they think that I've been his son, as he's 19 years older than me. Arnold was 15 years old when he was forcibly removed from my Santa Monica home. He lined up on the northwest corner of Venice and Lincoln Boulevards in 1942 with our father, Dorman Toyoshige Maeda, and our mother, Sasami Takeda Maeda. Arnold had to leave behind his beloved German Shepherd dog named Boy. Arnold's quote attests to that emotional farewell. Instead of being worried about where we were going, I was obsessed with the fact that I had parted with my constant companion, my pet dog Boy. For a 15 year old, that was unforgettably traumatic. Thank you, Arnold. 
May Kagiyama Kakihashi. May please stand and wave to the audience. The beautiful May. May is the uh, sister of Mary Nomura and manager. <laughs> May Kagiyama graduated from Venice High School in 1941, just months before Japan attacked the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. She lined up on the northwest corner of Venice and Lincoln with her family for transport to Manzanar. While interned, May's fiance, Hideo Kakihashi, received a draft notice from his uncle Sam. So before Hideo left camp for training with the Military Intelligence Service in Minnesota, May married him in a Manzanar barracks on February 19th, coincidentally the month and day of the signing of the Executive Order 9066, 77 years ago. February 19th is commemorated as a day of remembrance and May and Hideo's wedding anniversary. May's quote refers to the day they left Manzanar to start all over again. When the camp closed, we were given $25 and told to leave, but we had nothing when we left camp. No home, no jobs, no prospects. It was very hard on all of us. Thank you, May. Amy Takahashi Aoki. Amy could not be here today. Amy Takahashi's family was the only Japanese American family in Malibu in 1942. She was 16 years old when the Takahashi family complied with Civilian Executive Order No. 7 and reported to the northwest corner of Venice and Lincoln Boulevards. She, her two older brothers, and three sisters were U.S. born American citizens. Amy, now Amy Aoki, says this marker is special for her because it pays respect to her immigrant parents and to all the Japanese mothers and fathers who were forced to uproot their families. She credits her parents' strong resolve as survivors for getting them through this wartime period. Amy Aoki's quote reads, as a 16-year-old, I didn't realize the injustice fully, but in time, we learned how our rights as citizens were ignored. Thanks to the strength and resilience of our Issei parents, we were able to survive. Thank you, Amy. Toshinori Tomita passed away in January of 2017. His widow June and his daughter Jennifer are here. Please stand and wave to the audience. Yosh brought the VJAM committee back to the obelisk design, originally suggested by Emily Winters. We are so glad we realized Emily's and Yosha's vision and thank him for his quote of gratitude. I was only five when we were imprisoned in Manzanar. I feel so grateful to the many Nisei and Sansei who worked successfully for redress and reparations with the passage of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988. I feel extremely grateful also to all the people in the community who came together to make the VJAM a reality. Thank you, Yosh. The VJAM committee has been working on the Venice Japanese American Memorial Monument since 2010, almost one year after one of my students at Venice High School, Scott Pine, brought in the April 2009 issue of the Free Venice Beachhead for a current events discussion. The front page featured this 1942 pink tone photograph of people of Japanese ancestry lining up on Venice Boulevard in response to civilian exclusion order number seven, directing them to leave their homes in Venice, Santa Monica, and Malibu, and to report to this corner for transport to what would become the American concentration camp at Manzanar. The issue featured an article by the late Scott Ueda Jr titled, It Did Happen Here, Our Japanese Neighbors Were Sent to Concentration Camps. But the idea for this monument actually originated in the Venice community of artists and activists after September 11, 2001. Alarmed at irrational calls for arresting or deporting 
alleged terrorists, terrorists based on their national origin or religion. The Venice Peace and Freedom Party and the Free Venice Beachhead began their campaign to remind the community that such an indiscriminate round of a people with no regard for constitutional rights had already happened to persons of Japanese ancestry during World War II. To tell you more, please welcome a member of the VGEM Committee, the Venice Peace and Freedom Committee, or Party, and the Free Venice Beachhead Collective, Alice Steck. Okay. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, my apologies for reading. I'm hoping it's going to help me stay on time. Um, so in the months after 9-11, uh, 2001, members of our party were alarmed by the flag-waving hysteria around us. Uh, the right-wing government fanned the flames of fear and racism. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Uh, calling for crackdowns on groups that looked like those reported to be responsible for the attacks. This made us worry that something similar to the Japanese-American incarceration uh, could happen again to innocent Americans. Reminding our community that this could happen again was a good idea, we thought. If people understood the history of the Japanese-American incarceration, this would encourage communities to remain vigilant, speak out, and organize against injustice, and we could help prevent future violations of civil rights. The California Peace and Freedom Party has ballot status, and our platform, of course, contains text supporting civil liberties and human rights. Uh, several members are here today, perhaps uh, not wise to point out who they are. Um, <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of us here. Um, <laughs> in, in early 2002, <laughs> uh, the, the Venice Pe we're, we're socialists, right? Um, in uh, early 2002, the Venice Peace and Freedom Party circulated a petition to create a monument here. We obtained support from hundreds of community members and from local elected officials, then in, uh, including Ruth Galanter and George Nakano. Uh, the Free Venice Beachhead, which is uh, Venice's community monthly newspaper, uh, put out by a collective. Several members are here today. Um, and we have many of our sustainers are here today, too. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, we're very good at, um, at typos, unfortunately. And there was a major typo in today in uh, this month's edition, which has a whole page about the V-Jam. And uh, we mislabeled a lovely photo of uh, Ken Katsuoka to, um, as uh, Dr. Maki. So my apologies for that. I didn't catch it as the main proofreader. I apologize. Um, so we're now celebrating our 50th year. And we printed many articles over the years. And um, the April 2009 issue was really quite instrumental because it featured an article by Venice resident Scott Ueda, who sa sadly recently passed away, about his incarcerated family members and included a call to contact the then city councilman Bill Rosendahl to support a marker, a monument, or a sculpture at this site. And the whole project gained a lot of momentum when Venice High School students started to participate. Um, and their teacher, Phyllis Hayashibara, took up the cause and um, obtained support from our councilman, Bill Rosendahl, who was a big supporter of this effort. And many thanks to Phyllis. Uh, we had some good ideas, but we needed somebody better organized to actually carry it through. And um, then um, the Venice Arts Council joined the effort. We're going to hear from them next. And probably most importantly, uh, five former incarcerees. They're all born in this country, and two of them are no longer with us. Um, Fred and Yosh, we thank you and we miss you. Um, the relevance of this monument is obvious in the current political climate of uh, racism, intolerance, xenophobia, fear-mongering. And we're shocked that almost half of American voters support politicians who so openly support restricting civil liberties and civil rights. However, it would be a mistake to only be concerned with the obvious threats to justice by the current government. Remember that Executive Order 9066, which led to the incarceration of 120,000 Japanese Americans, was signed by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, highly regarded, promoted many progressive initiatives, and then President Obama, who was a Democrat, a good speaker, but in the meantime, he also authorized the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, which makes legal many serious restrictions of civil liberties and includes such provisions as extended arrest without due process. Clearly, the people must remain engaged and vigilant, regardless of who occupies the government positions of power. And our hope is that the VGEM monument will permanently contribute to this critical vigilance. Thank you. Thank you.